Hey everyone, Vinayak here. At last, a 3D printer that fits my table. Don't get me wrong, I love the large build volume that the Astro Max and the Twilight 10 facilitates, but some of us might be just starting into 3D printing and something a bit small, maybe something this size would be a great starting point. So let's unbox the Pixel S1 and check it out. This is the Wall 3D Pixel S1, which is one of Wall 3D's smallest 3D printers in terms of build volume as compared to the other two, the Astro Max and the Twilight 10. Opening up the box, we have everything laid out neatly. Let's start out with this small packet. It contains the tools, accessories and also a roll of filament. Here's the filament holder, power cord. Now for the extruder column. Here's the direct drive extruder with the Wall 3D branding on it. We have another section below which has the controller base with the carborundum glass bed. The build dimensions can go as high as 230 x 230 x 260 mm. These are the provided screws, a set of allen keys, a spanner, a teflon tube and an extra nozzle is also included. 30 grams of filament, more than enough to test the printer and print a small model. The extruder column will fit in here into these grooves. Wall3D has designed a 3D printer which is first of its kind and easy to assemble in one step. It is 90% pre-assembled and hence even a beginner with zero basic knowledge can assemble this printer. Carefully slide the column into the grooves. I move the printer to the edge of the table to access the screw holes below. Do it on both sides. Attach the interface cable. We have these white connectors on the sides. Plug them in. Here's the power plug. Add these screws to make sure the power plug does not disconnect accidentally. This is the toolbox cover. We have a mini toolbox area on the base where we can store our tools. No need to fumble around looking for them as they are all safe in one place. The filament holder slides on and snaps into place. We have the Pixel S1 branding in front and we can also find a USB port, a SD card slot and a USB-C port. We have two slots on top to store your SD cards. Here's the power port, plug in the provided power cable and turn on. The Wall3D logo appears on boot up and we are presented with the printer's touch interface. Here's how the completed printer looks. The extruder is direct drive meaning that its dual gears are housed above the nozzle and they pull in the filament directly. I have installed the filament provided in the box and inserted the other end into the extruder. Insert the SD card into the slot like so. It goes in upside down. There is no SD card included in the box so you need to get your own. The touchscreen allows us to interact with the printer, level the bed, start a print and also set up the defaults for the printer such as the nozzle and bed temps. We can also set the Z offset if you find the printer is not keeping the appropriate height between the bed and the nozzle. As we have just put the printer together, a bed leveling is in order, which is quite easy via this one touch option. The printer uses bilinear leveling by tapping the extruder onto the bed in 12 zones. Now that that's done, let's try out a print. My SD card has two files on it. This SD card is actually from the Twilight 10 and I'm choosing the Pumpkin Monster G-Code file which I had printed last time. Printing is now underway. Here's the print process.
and once it's printed it pops off quite easily the print has come out really clean and i like that the printer was very easy to put together and uh, the screws from below are a bit annoying with me having to bring the printer all the way to the edge of the table just to install them but it was easier than picking the printer up and uh, the build volume is not that large but it's good enough for beginners and it's also great professionally too as the direct drive extruder works really well and the auto bed leveling is a godsend This Pixel S1 is the smallest in build volume as compared to the Aster Max and the Twilight 10, but it might be still big enough for many. And it's easy to put together. I just had two bolts to attach to the extruder column, power it on, and it's ready to use. That's quite nice. Links to the printers can be found in the description below. Do you use a 3D printer? Which one do you have? Make sure to comment below. So that was the video. Make sure to like. subscribe and also hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are added thank you for watching and see you all next time